Hi everyone, welcome to the lecture on logistic regression. So for this video, we're going to specifically just focus on one type of a classification method that is used in data mining called logistic regression. Um, just like the name suggests, it uses the basic regression analysis premise but what's different about logistic regression is that it helps us in classifying binary or categorical variables. So the reason why we have used regression analysis in the past is to find out the relationship between our y variable, which is our response variable, and we want to know the, the values for that variable. Um, so we're using our x variables or the predictor variables to help us predict the values for y. Uh, the logistic regression model, just like the regular regression model, gives us a regression equation that we can then use in the prediction of our y variables. Now, uh, like I mentioned before, logistic regression is a type of a classification technique where we want to um, have a model that is going to help us predict the class of a certain observation. Now, by class, I mean uh, whether or not it falls in a particular bucket that we've already defined. Take the example of um, movies that win Oscars. Now, uh, the class of this data would be did the movie win the Oscar or not? So the value of 1 would indicate that yes, the movie won the Oscar award, uh, and the value of 0 is going to indicate no, the movie did not win the Oscar award. So we can use different data points about the movie to help us predict this yes-no class for the movie. Uh, one of those um, variables that can help us predict could be the number of Oscar nominations. Now, the screen that you see right now in front of you, if you take a closer look at the graph on the left, it shows you a linear regression line which has been constructed against two variables. The first variable is your predict response variable, uh, the one that we're predicting, winner of best picture. So um, this is a categorical variable. Uh, zero indicates that the movie did not win the Oscar and the value of one indicates that the movie won the Oscar. Now um, there are no in-between values for this variable. It's a binary variable. It's zero one. Our predictor variable is the number of Oscar nominations that the movie received. Now, uh, from this regression analysis, if we just run this data as it is, we can see that we do have a straight line, but our actual data points are very nicely stacked up around 0 and around 1, which is obvious because it's a categorical variable. Those are the only two values it can take. So the problem with this analysis is that not only it's, it shows a pattern of misrepresentation because of this obvious pattern between the categorical variables and our response variable, or sorry, our predictor variable, but it's also not a good fit, as you can see from the low R square. And with this analysis, if we completely use it as it is, it will show us that the probability of a movie that has been nominated for more than 17 Oscars is higher than 1. And the probability of a movie winning an Oscar with two no nominations is less than 0. That completely negates the concept of probability because probabilities need to be within the range of 0 and 1. So we want to apply regression analysis similar to this, but in a way that it's modified to this graph in the right, which shows an S-shaped curve. And we have the same two variables, 
uh, on the axes, the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And the S-shaped curve clearly uh, is within the boundaries of the probability. So below 0, there are no values. And above 1, there are no values for our predictor variable, which is how it should be if we are predicting probabilities um, using regression. Now, this S-shaped curve cannot be simply achieved using a regular regression technique. We have to do some data transformation in order to get to this stage to apply regression analysis to our model. So if you take a look at your regular regression equation, it's usually the general format looks like this, where y is our predictor variable, uh, where our y is our response variable, sorry. Uh, beta 0 is the y-intercept. Beta 1 is the coefficient for our first predictor variable, x1. And beta 2 is the coefficient for our second predictor variable, x2. And we can have multiple predictor variables the same way in our model. Now, we want to be able to use this equation, but we want the output to look like the S-shaped curve on the right-hand side. The way we can do that is instead of using probability of winning an Oscar as a, as a response variable in place of Y here, we can use the odds of winning as a response variable. So what I mean by that is Instead of using the same equation as, give me one second, P, which is the probability of winning, is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2. We replace P with the odds of winning. So generally, odds are used a lot in gambling terminology and as well. And the odds of an event, uh, they range between the metric of zero and positive infinity. So the, the odd, just like probability, is a measure that is used um, whenever we're talking about uncertain events. So to convert probabilities into odds, the formula is that odds is equal to probability divided by 1 minus the probability. So for example, if an event has a probability of 0 0.6 of happening, then the odds of that event happening would be equal to 0 0.6 divided by 0 0.4, um, which gives you what the chances of that event happening is. So it's basically the same idea as probability, just expressed in a different way. So with the help of replacing P with odds instead, what we've done is, because odds is now not limited to the 0, 1 range, instead it's limited to the 0 to positive infinity range, we've gotten rid of the upper bound on our y variable, which was initially 1. Now we don't have an upper bound because we've transformed our y variable. However, that still um, has a problem because we still have a lower sort of a floor on our values that the predictor var variable can take because it cannot go beyond uh, 0. It cannot go uh, to to negative values um, and that's still a problem with the odds. So what we do is we are going to use, I'm sorry this last line is not correct. So what we're going to, prob this should be probabilities are a metric between 0 and 1. So what we are going to do is we're going to do one more step of transformation. We're going to use the natural log of odds to eliminate the lower and upper bounds on probability. 
So essentially, um, for this regression equation that we have identified earlier, instead of just using p is equals to the regression equation, so instead of predicting probability, we are now predicting the odds using the regression equation. But we're not using odds on its own. We are taking the natural log of the odds and equating that to the regression equation. So basically, we're not calculating y on its own using the regression equation. We're calculating a transformed value of y uh, using the regression equation. What this does is it helps us predict this relationship, which ca we can then reverse engineer to get to the value of p, which is what we really want. So in order to explain this slightly more clearly, uh, I'm going to use an example uh, in Excel, and then we're going to run the regression model in R, because uh, logistic regression, running it in Excel, uh, it can be cumbersome and sometimes not accurate. So we're going to switch softwares and move to R. But I'm, I'm going to still do my simple and basic analysis uh, in Excel because it's easy to use and everybody is familiar with it. But the only part that I'm going to run in R is the actual regression part, which is going to help me identify the values for these coefficients, which I can then take back to Excel and backtrack to the probability of winning or losing. So we're going to move to an Excel sheet um, to, to analyze the logistic regression using an example. Uh, the Excel sheet has been provided to you, so you can um, work along with me in order to get the results and compare your results with the results that I get. So let's start off with our example. The example that we're using in order to run our logistic regression model is um, using email data. So all these, all this information that you see on this screen is from the Excel file that we're going to use as an example for logistic regression. The first column represents the, the person's ID whose emails that we've been analyzing and each of these uh, IDs is a different person. Now, the emails that you receive in your inbox, think of each email being uh, identified with its ID. Then we have calculated the percentage of exclamation marks that were used in the content of the email. We also calculated the percentage of the dollar sign in the email. So for example, if you get uh, receive an email which says that the Nigerian prince is dying and he wants you to inherit all his money, uh, an email like that is going to have a high number of exclamation marks and a high number of dollar signs as well, just so that you can uh, click on the link in the email. So these, these type of emails are clickbait emails. And we're using this, these two attributes to classify the email as spam or not spam. So you see that in the column D, the spam values either take one or zero, which means that spam is a binary variable. On the other hand, dollar and exclamation, these are percentages. So the first value is three point, uh, sorry, um, thirty six point nine percent, and so on. Now, for us to be able to input these values in R, we are going to first prep the data, and as explained in the earlier video on introduction to data mining, we always divide our data set or partition our data set in to two or three partitions. 
uh, for our sake, since this is the only model that we're working on, we'll only divide it into two partitions, the test set and the training set. So uh, as a general rule of thumb, we use 70% of the values in the data set as our training set. So what I've done is basically I've highlighted the last 25 observations. This is because I wanted you to um, identify that these are the values that I'm going to use for my test set and the top 70% values are the ones that I'm going to be using as a part of my training set. So again, we're still in the data prepping stage. So for us to be able to import this data into R, we first have to convert it into a CV, CSV file. So CSV stands for a comma separated file. And the reason why we're converting into CSV is because usually when you import an Excel file as it is in R, sometimes the import process doesn't go as smoothly because of all the additional formatting that is done in, in Excel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the first 70% of my data set. So it's clearly till I reach this yellow line copy this and paste this into a new blank worksheet okay and once I've copied this my training set is ready I'm going to save this as a CSV file so if you scroll down Instead of saving it as an Excel workbook, we're going to save it as a .csv file. And I'm going to name this file spam data. Now, just a word of caution. Whenever you're going to be using files in R, don't use spaces in the naming of the file. Because R is not very good with spaces. It's not very good with characters. It gives you errors. Um, for those reasons. So you'll see that I have used the title spam data, but I didn't add a space here. I just used the capitalization to denote the new word um, that I started here. So once I save this, now my training set is ready to be imported into R. So I'm going to open up R Studio. And if you've already downloaded R and R Studio on your computers, just note that you need to download both R and R Studio. R is the machinery and R Studio is the environment that we're going to work on. So whenever we, we work on R, we're actually going to be opening up R Studio, which uses R in the background to run it. So when you open up R, you'll see that there are three obvious windows in front of you. This window on the left is your console where you can save. Um, we can, this is where you're actually typing all the codes and the commands. Uh, the window on the top right hand side shows you the environment or the data values that you're working with. So any active data sets are going to show up here and the window at the bottom right hand side uh, you can click around this is where your plots would show up you can install packages from here check the help menu and so on so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type my first command in R for me to import the data set into R so I'll think of a name that I want to give my data set I'm going to call my data spam Actually, let's use capital letters, spam data. Now, note that R is case sensitive. So if I'm typing S capital and D capital, I have to be consistent and type it the same way throughout for me to not get any errors. Next, I'm going to type the less than sign and followed by a hyphen. So these two signs, which look like an arrow essentially, are R's equivalent of the equal sign. 
Now I'm going to type my first command, which is read.csv. This is the command that we're going to use to import our data set into R. And inside that, the first argument is file.choose. Now, since file.choose is a separate function on its own, it has to have its own brackets. So I put the brackets for file.choose. Once you put one bracket, the second one automatically appears. The second argument is whether or not your data has a header row. So here, by typing header is equals to true, true being in all caps, I'm letting R know that the first row in my data values contains um, the column headings. And once I press enter here, R should prompt you to select a file from wherever you are storing. So I'm going to go look for my data set which is the spam data and I select open and now you'll see that it popped up in our global environment under active data sets. So we know that spam data has 70 observation of four variables. If I just want to do a sneak peek of the data set, I can type the command head and inside that type the name of my data set. That gives you the top 10% values of your data set. This way I'm able to see the column headings in my data set that I just imported and the top few values of the first few observations. Okay. Um, if you want to know what the size of your data set is, you can use the function dim and inside the brackets you put the name of your data set and it tells you that it's a 70 by 4 data set which means there are 70 rows and there are four columns so you can see that um, it's pretty easy to tell in R although you cannot see the actual data set like you can see it in Excel it's still you can still see what's going on in the data set so now my data set is ready for the regression analysis to be run to run the regression analysis, I'm going to name my model. Let's call this model one, okay? And again, I'm going to use R's equivalent of the equal sign, the less than followed by a hyphen. And I'm going to use the GLM function, which is a function for re linear regression models, generalized linear regression models. And inside this function, the first argument would be the relationship that I want in my equation, then the second argument would be the data file that I want to run the regression on. And then the third file, uh, the third argument would be the family of regression models that I'm using. So the first one is that I want to find out the relationship between spam data, the column spam, and I want to relate it to through regression to exclamation and dollar. So again, I'm going to type my data set's name spam data, dollar sign, exclamation, plus spam data, dollar sign, dollar. So this dollar sign is R's notation of identifying which column are you referring to in this data set. So I have to do this because if I'm working on multiple data sets, this helps R identify which columns in which data set I'm referring to. And this squiggly sign, tilde, is R's notation for running regression. So essentially, this is your Y variable. And then after the squiggly sign, tilde, you put your x variables. If I had only one, I would have stopped here, but I have two, so I added plus another one. And similarly, I can keep going on. The next argument is data is equals to spam data. And finally, the last argument is family is equals to binomial and bracket signs, and then enter. So now, since I did not get any errors in my console, it means that R was successfully able to run the model. And if I just type model one, 